Hello and welcome once again to one of the routing protocols, routing information protocol, otherwise known as RIP. But most important, the fundamental difference between version 1 and version 2. So we are going to look at, rather see, how version 1 does not send subnet masks, hence being referred to as classful protocol, and how 2 is able to send routing updates within the subnet mask that it has as being referred to as classless protocol. So when you look at this topology, it actually conforms to variable length subnet masking principles because you've got different subnet masks it has here. We have slash 27, slash 28, slash 29, slash 30 and uh, it does not conform with class full form of addressing where we only have common masks. So apart from just having slash 30, 30, 30, we have got different. Otherwise, if this topology was slash 30 all through, then it could be able to conform to the classful protocol uh, design principles. But the way it is, it conforms to classless protocol design principles. So what we are going to do, we are going to configure version 1 on it and then we see whether it is able to perform rather peak remote networks dynamic routes because when you look at R2, it has got three networks and it's missing three networks. So if we configure RIP version 1, will it be able to pick the other three remote networks? And if you configure RIP version 2, will it be able to pick the other three remote networks. So that's what we need to unearth going forward with this topology. So let's begin. So in my R2, the first thing I'm going to do is to check whether I have, check my routing table, to show IP route command. There you go. I see I've got three connected networks. Then I configure the routing protocol, router RIP version 1, then specify the network, 192.168.1.0.0, then another network I see it's 8, so to come here, specify 8, another network will be 32, 10 to 32, like that. Then I can save it. We are done with R1. We come R2, that is. We come to R1. Try to view the routing table. Confirm it as 3. You show IP route. There we go. So to be router RIP, specify it is version 1. Then the network. See the first directly connected network is 10.0, so 192.168.100. It is followed by 4, then it's followed by 16. Yeah, sorry, network 192.168.10.0. go to R3. We also know it has got three directly connected network. Do show IP route. There we go. And then we uh, can begin our routing protocol. Router RIP version 1. Specify the networks that we have. You can see here we have four. Network 8 and network 40. So it will be 192.168.10.4.8 and 40. And then you save it. Now we have configured RIP version 1. So the statement here is it does not send subnet mask in routing updates, therefore referred to as classful protocol. So let's see. Let's try to view our routing protocol. Do show IP route. What do we 
you see. So at least there is one routing protocol. I can see slash 30. It has been able to pick. But we are not able in the context of R3 to be able to see we only see the 30. We are not able to see 28. Neither are we able to see 27. Why you are getting that is because the link between R2, R1, R1, R3, R2, R3 is of the same mask, which will be regarded as a class 4. So we expect when you go to R1 and R2, we expect uh, a routing protocol of uh, slash 30 being read because here we know 8 and 4 is directly connected and what you're able to see is 0, 10.0, which is actually at the extreme end of it. If we come to R1, we know 0 and 4 is connected, so we expect A is to be able to pick to, to be in R1. Let's confirm it. Do show IP route, the routing table. Yeah, there we have it, 8, which is on the other end of it. Yeah, this, was, this one was remote to R1. We also expect from R2 perspective 0, 10.0 .0 and 10.8 which is directly connected. So we had to expect is 10.4. Let's view it. Do we show IP route? What do we get? Yes, there it is. 4. So that is by virtue of the fact that uh, does not send subnet mask in routing address therefore referred to as classful protocol. That means if this topology, the connection between R2 and the PC was a slash 30, a slash 30 between R1 and the PC, and a slash 30 between R3 and the PC, then it means all these routers could have, the routing table could have six networks each will be able to garner the three remote networks that does not have. So we see that that entirely does not support valuable length subnet masking. So let's try and configure version 2. Let's try to eliminate version 1. And then we see whether this statement of it being able to send subnet masking routing updates indeed is true. So begin with R2. Get rid of the first uh, the, 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 the version 1 routing protocol grip so what we're going to do here is uh, just disable it by saying no router rip that's the only command we can do then we save that in the begin router rip this time round we specify version 2 we specify our three networks that was 0, 8, and 32. So network 192.168.10.0, 8, then 32. We save it. We're done with R1. Now we come to R2. Remove what we have, no router rip. Save it. Then we begin a fresh router rip version two. Then you specify three networks, which is again zero, four, and sixteen. So that will mean network one nine two dot one six eight dot one zero dot one zero dot zero. Another network that we have is four. And finally, we have one six at the end. We save it. Uh -huh. Now we come to R three. So we have seen earlier on how the common masks were able to be pulled up. Another command you can verify is you do show IP protocols. Let's try to see what is it. We are using protocol rip, and then we are able to see 
the networks which are being routed. It is indeed one which is being routed there. So we can remove it. Now root a rip. Then we save it. So we can try to see our network. We have network uh, 4, 8, and 40. 4, 8, and 40. So root a rip. Version 2. Then network. 192.168.10.4 The other one is 8 And the last one is 40 4 0 was the end Then you save it Now we have configured with version 2 And we have also eliminated version 1 So let's try and see whether this R3 which has got network 40 10.4, 10.8 will have 10.16, 10.0, and 10.32. Are we going to have three routes which have been run dynamically? Three extra routes run dynamically in R3. So here we go. Try to see. Show IP route. There we have it. We have the 10.0, we have the 10.16, we have the 10.32. It has actually been learned. You can even try to bury to, to try and uh, see how many networks have been learned. Show IP route, show IP protocols. It's another powerful troubleshooting tool you can use. Again, it's RIP. The version is 2. The networks which are being routed is there. The routing information sources we have. Uh, the interfaces are also there. So we are able to tell which version we are using when you use show IP protocols command. We are able to see in your routing table the kind of networks that have been learned automatically. So we expect the same treatment in R1. That means we need to have 10.32, 8, and 40 in R1. So my issue show IP root protocol. There we have it. We have the three networks conforming. In R2, we also expect to see 10.16, 4, and 40. Having show IP route. Here yeah, we have also the three protocols coming forth. So in this topology, it had six networks, and each router had three networks conductively connected, so it required three extra networks. And that means these pieces will be able to communicate. So when you're in PC1, you can be able to communicate with PC2, knowing PC2 is 40. That the IP address is, uh, you can assign it, this is 46, sorry for this. I wanted to assign the last IP address in it. Because network is 40, broadcast will be 41, the last IP address will be 46, so that will be fine, 41. So the default gateway should be 41. That means it's the IP address of this other end of this router, R3, that's connected to an Ethernet network. You can try to view it by issuing the command uh, show IP interface brief. Is it indeed 41? Yes, there it is. Gigabit slot 0 0.2 is indeed 41. So that should actually come in the other end of this IP address. So this one we have assigned 62. So let's see, are we able to communicate with the other computer in the remote network, 192.168.10.46, which is towards the other end. Yeah, there is indeed communication, meaning the router is able to reach to the other end. 
is in a department kind of a setup, everybody will be happy that they are able to communicate, they are able to send files, things like that. So what you are able to see here is indeed RIP version 1 does not support variable length subnet masking and version 2 supports variable length subnet masking and RIP version 1 is indeed a class for protocol will not send subnet masking routing updates unless they conform to the same standard 2 will not care about that, be able to send and the others, this one is able to use broadcast to communicate with the member, neighbors or peers and to be able to use multicast. Later on, we shall be able to look at how authentication in version 2 is supported and 1 does not support authentication. But most likely, because RIP is a decent vector protocol, we can also look at the enhanced version of it, which is enhanced interior gateway protocol, to be able to re emphasize uh, this point of authentication that we have. Thank you for watching. And it's always been a pleasure having you.